with details on CM Punk being backstage at Raw and more. This is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Recalling Steve Austin's heel turn and siding with Vince McMahon from WrestleMania 17, Matt Hardy said on his Extreme Life podcast, it was interesting. I mean, Steve was really confident in himself and he thought he could make this thing work and I like the mentality. I like the approach of trying something different and new. You have to always change. You have to always evolve, right? Stone Cold became a character that was so beloved. It was very hard to get him booed and that was going to be problematic all the way through that. I almost, to me, it feels very similar to Jeff Hardy. It would be hard to make Jeff Hardy a full-fledged heel because he's just such a beloved character and people connect with him in a way that very few people do. Stone Cold was that way too. I know he went out and it was in Texas of all places where he is absolutely put on a pedestal and he was getting cheered when he was beating the Rock's ass after aligning with Mr. McMahon or whatever. They knew that was going to be problematic so they said how can we get some legitimate heat on this guy and he said well let's call in these young heartthrobs the Hardy Boys and Lita Team Extreme. Let's get some heat on those guys. Speaking about training alongside Roman Reigns in Florida Championship Wrestling, former WWE star Carly Perez told Hannibal TV, Roman was always a nice guy. He was always fun to work with. We literally came up together in FCW. He was a solid guy. He has a great look, and I knew he was going to do great things in the company, which he has. Sheamus was massively talented and still is a sweetheart, and the same goes for him. Nobody's really quite like Sheamus. It was a solid crew of talent at that time. Touching on his most recent recovery, Adam Cole told Good Karma Wrestling, Brian Danielson absolutely was one of the people who were incredibly helpful. He understood in a lot of ways what I was going through, and he reached out, which I thought was so kind and so thoughtful of him. Mentioning how he pitched having NXT stars on his cruise for matches, Chris Jericho revealed on his podcast, The first thing that I did was, my first idea was I'm going to have NXT come aboard. Because I was like, I'm not a promoter. I don't know where to pull guys from indies if I can work with a company and then they can send whoever they want. I don't have to worry about that part of it. They can book the matches. They can have whatever they want to do. So I approached Triple H in Philadelphia. I remember I had a meeting with him about having NXT on my cruise. Now people thought I was nuts at first. They always think I'm nuts when I have these ideas like, how are you going to have wrestling in the middle of the ocean? I'm like, well, dude, I just played a rock show in the middle of the ocean. It's the same thing. Sometimes it's a little bit wobbly, but most of the time it's pretty smooth. It's not dangerous. So I talked with NXT for a while, and then in classic WWF fashion, they finally called me in a group call with about seven people on it and took 45 minutes to tell me they weren't interested. I was like, you could have just said, hey guys, we're not interested. Bye. 45 minutes. The reason I found out was that this is so classic. Vince McMahon doesn't like cruises because he had just seen the news, or I guess there was a cruise where a bunch of people got food poisoning. Something happened, we're like, whatever. It's not going to happen on this cruise. I guarantee that. He was convinced that every cruise cruise, people die of food poisoning. He was like, yeah, he's worried that there might be problems with the ship. I'm like, what? He's scared it's going to hit an iceberg? We're going to Mexico. It's fine. Taking to Twitter, Jim Ross would post a photo of himself with his former broadcast partner, Jerry Lawler, where he wrote, Had a great one-hour convo today with Jerry Lawler, who's recovering from the effects of a stroke. Jerry's voice seems to get stronger the longer we spoke. The King will undergo a procedure next week to help his situation. Despite requesting the releases from WWE, it seems the NXT tag team known as the Grizzled Young Veterans is not going to be let go by the company. James Drake said that, as of today, WWE has denied my request for my release. I want to thank you all for your support throughout my career. I'll never take that for granted. My contract with WWE expires on October 14th, 2023. I'm excited to share our next chapter once we are free agents. Zach Gibson added, today WWE have denied our release. 
release, which was requested on April 3rd. On October 15th, 2023, we will be free agents again. I personally want to thank all of our fans for your continued support. It means a lot to both of us, especially during times like these. We'll see you on the 16th. Talking about the contract status of Mercedes Monet after she lost the IWGP women's title, Sean Rossap said that Mercedes Monet has no more dates left with stardom as of this moment, according to members of her team. The two sides are open to doing more business in the future, and stardom was said to have been happy with the deal and the business she conjured up. We're told that both sides have been open to doing business again in the future, but that it would likely require a bigger renegotiation after the business she drew there. It was reported this weekend that there was an extension to her deal with New Japan Pro Wrestling and Stardom, but we're told by members of her team that as of now, that covers the May New Japan Pro Wrestling show in the United States. Sources we spoke to in NJPW weren't sure how long the deal ran, but did say there weren't matches scheduled in Japan for at least a while. Mercedes has a busy day as she has a signing at Atomic Crush events that afternoon until 3 p.m. local time and will be running over to the venue for New Japan at 5 p.m. local time. In addition, we're told that she's been working on more television and film projects. Touching on AEW's new television show, Andrew Zarian said that there's a lot of speculation regarding where AEW Collision will air on Saturdays. Despite TBS being rumored, I'm being told that TNT will land the new show. He added that it would air from 8 to 10 p.m. Speaking of AEW Collision, this was said on Wrestling Observer Live about a special tagline being dedicated to CM Punk for the debut show. What I know is that they have a tagline for this show. I'm not talking about a tagline for Collision, I'm talking about a tagline for that specific show at the United Center. Whatever it is, I believe it's CM Punk related. I think this time, they're going to announce that, that is going to be where he is going to be returning, and it's not going to be like the first time where it was a big surprise. I don't know that for sure. The fact that they have a Punk related tagline tells me, I think at some point we are going to be told in advance for the debut of this big show. At a recent WWE Live event, Cody Rhodes talked to the fans in attendance where he mocked Brock Lesnar. Here's the clip. What's your hat? <laughs> Brock Lesnar's screwed now, y'all. <laughs> I feel like on you, this looks like a Macho Man hat. On me, I feel like an exotic dancer, right? <laughs> looks better on you, my friend. Thank you very much. Got it? Success. Guys, I love you very much. I'm going to sign a few autographs, take a few pictures. They are going to kick us out of here, but you guys have a great night. Love you. Drive safe. Have a good night, y'all. Thank you. When it comes to Monday Night Raw, it seems superstars weren't too pleased with Vince McMahon's alterations to the program, as PW Insider reported. We are working to confirm the changes, but have been hearing from multiple sources about talent's unhappiness. With news that CM Punk was backstage at Raw, PW Insider noted that we are told that the talents who saw Punk greeted him warmly as most haven't seen him since 2014. He apparently spoke to Triple H, with it also said, We can also confirm that multiple sources stated The Miz and Punk spoke for a short period of time and cleared the air. Punk can be seen outside the building in this video. Hey, CM Punk, we won't tell you here if you come over here and take some pictures. <laughs> I see you over there with that red cat.
it appears that CM Punk was told to leave prior to Raw starting, as Fightful said. Several talent had been told that CM Punk was asked to leave by Jim Kelly, WWE's head of security, and Keith Bergdorf, but that hadn't been confirmed. Vince McMahon was rumored to have sent the orders remotely. Given his appearance backstage at Raw, superstars in WWE are wondering why CM Punk did this. As Sean Ross Sapp said, numerous wrestlers in WWE believed that the move was a publicity stunt for a return to AEW soon. There were several AEW talent in disbelief when they heard that he was backstage at Raw. WWE talent were shocked that he got backstage, even though he's got history in the company. One NXT star took a shot at Punk's appearance backstage, writing on Twitter, you know who else is backstage at Raw? A bunch of hard-working talent who bust their ass every week for your entertainment. Enjoy the show. Sounds like a huge one. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all later.